How good is that technology, knowing exactly how many people are looking and where they're looking at properties across Australia? Absolutely sensational. Joining me in the studio at the moment, my guest uh, is the Lord Mayor of the City of Adelaide, Stephen Yarwood. Stephen, good to see you again. Hi Tim, it's good to be here. Thank you. Um, Stephen, for those of people who perhaps have, can I say, living under a rock for the last couple of years and don't know who you are, give us a little bit of a rundown on how you've become the Mayor and where you've come from. Well, I can't believe we're halfway through the term now, so I've been Lord Mayor for two years. I was elected to council the term before and became the Deputy Lord Mayor in the second year. Uh, before that, I was the principal uh, town planner at the city of Playford, right. uh, so I worked on some really big projects in a very happening part of Adelaide. Uh, but I've also worked as an urban planner in state government, doing development assessment, uh, policy and strategy, uh, as well as being a research officer to the Environment Resources Development Committee of Parliament. Uh, researched and studied and worked uh, overseas, uh, mm -hmm. really passionate about cities. Uh, it is my business uh, and now I get a chance to do it from the role of Lord Mayor which is uh, a real uh, genuine privilege. Uh, I've never worked so hard in my life but I've got to tell you I've loved every single minute of it. Well, it's, um, it's, it's wonderful to have someone with so much passion involved. Um, can I ask uh, perhaps to start with some of the things that you've been talking about in the media and so forth, bringing the city to life over summer. Tell us a little bit about that. Well ultimately, you know, the key message that Council's serious about now is more people spending more time in the city. Mm. Uh, we're actually the third busiest CBD in all of Australia. Uh, so we've got about 200,000 people coming into the CBD every single day. Okay. Uh, now what we want to do is capture those people, give them more of an excuse to shop in the Rundle Mall, more of an excuse to stay on after work and go out and have dinner, uh, but also activate our streets and our parklands. So 80% of the entire public realm of a city is the streets. We've always used them as the places to get from A to B. Mm -hmm. uh, they're soulless, they don't have the character, uh, and we're trying to fill them full of people. Uh, but most importantly, just get people to slow down and engage with the city uh, and spend more time in the city. Uh, we can't create more people, but what we can do is give them a reason not to go home at five o'clock every night. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's interesting. Now, I know you travel a bit and that forms a lot of the research mm. uh, in terms of, of some of these ideas. Uh, what countries have, have you drawn inspiration from and, and cities and, and the like for, for this thinking? Well, look, I make no bones about the fact that I am passionate about seeing what other cities are doing. Uh, I don't want Adelaide to be like any other city. Uh, interestingly enough, I will say I'm on track to spend less than any Lord Mayor in a long time on travel uh, because I have actually <laughs> been uh, invited a lot to go overseas and also speak. Uh, and uh, so not only do I go overseas, but we also have world experts come to Adelaide. So uh, Jan Gell is a global guru mm -hmm. who has just finished his uh, second report for the City of Adelaide uh, and made some fantastic recommendations. We've also had a placemaking expert from uh, uh, New York that has done some great stuff uh, with Broadway, creating it for people and mm -hmm. uh, really starting to bring that to life and, and put more activities into places. Uh, so that's been really important. Uh, but I've made it uh, my responsibility to also uh, interact with our sister cities. Uh, we're celebrating the 30th and 40th anniversary of Christchurch and uh, Hameji this year mm -hmm. and the 30th and 40th anniversary of um, Austin and Penang next year. So okay. I've, I've fallen into a moment where I've got to do all of these things. Um, Christchurch is an inspiration uh, because they are using temporary activation uh, because 80% of their CBD has to be demolished. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's in a way has been interesting. Uh, Austin for example uh, was, was a great trip um, but they are the world live music capital and so you know how do they do outdoor live music how do they promote uh, live music venues how do they build that critical mass uh, they're doing some great stuff uh, new york is doing some really good place making stuff around creating spaces for people mm -hmm. uh, but uh, realistically melbourne's doing great stuff you know copenhagen not even from the cycling perspective but from their value add design culture and the niche market they fit into sitting right next to the massive german economy um, is an inspiration for Adelaide as a niche city sitting next to the eastern states. Uh, we're never going to be the, uh, the biggest, but uh, we are uh, now the fifth most livable city. And mm. if we can attract knowledge workers, uh, we can really become a smart city that's doing really good stuff. Uh, and uh, I'm really optimistic for Adelaide. I think there's a culture of change in this place-making and temporary activation is, is driving a culture 
not only in the corporation of the city, but also the community that says we want change and we're actually going to be a part of that change. And so I think it's a really exciting time for Adelaide. Okay. Um, for, for someone who's a, a little um, less understanding of all of these, tell, tell me about placemaking. What, what, what is it? What does it mean to the, uh, to the family who live in the suburbs who, who do want to come into town? Absolutely. You know, always like to avoid jargon. I think that's really important. Um, placemaking, I guess, is getting the council administration uh, to focus less on procedures and processes mm -hmm. and get to them to think about the actual place that they're trying to create things. So start to see it from other people's perspective. It's also about engaging small business, helping them create experiences in the place. Probably the best example is this notion uh, that uh, we've been taught about, um, the power of 10. You know, a city needs 10 precincts. Each of those precincts need 10 places and each of those places needs 10 things to do. Right. Uh, so, you know, whether it's uh, outdoor dining, whether it's stopping to appreciate some art, uh, whether you can grab a coffee from a little coffee cart, uh, whether you have a, a, an interesting uh, opportunity to interact with people because you, there are tables and chairs and benches, uh, you know, there might even be a sort of a second-hand bookstore or, or uh, a garden there that's pleasurable, mm. uh, or buskers and live music. So this sense of urban planners have been very good at creating a canvas or councils, but they've never been good at pr creating content and uh, delivering a system where this council, the residents, the small businesses can actually own that place mm. and make it an interesting place so that instead of e everyone competing to draw people into the businesses, you're actually working together to draw people to that place, slow them down and actually give them an excuse to stay there and when that happens, you have people. And when you get people, you have thriving businesses, you have thriving communities. So it's all about thinking about people and getting them to enjoy environments. And, and once again, it's about more people spending more time uh, in nice places that they want to be in. Mm. Well, speaking of nice places, a bit of a passion of mine is the, the banks of the Torrens, um, which I personally think is way underutilised in terms of mm. all of those things you're just talking about. What, what's your position and, and indeed the council's position on uh, either permanent or semi-permanent sort of um, cafes, even coffee vans, uh, the little um, spot that you can buy a pie or a, mm. as you can in New York, a, a bag of peanuts or a, or a hot dog or something like that um, along, the, along the banks? Well, not only the banks, but also our squares mm. have always been underutilised. So, you know, Victoria Square is 49% roadway, yep. uh, and other squares are upwards of 30 or 40% roadway, and they haven't really been places where people have wanted to go. Uh, so, the temporary activation of the placemaking also includes those food carts. Uh, you would have seen an explosion of those over the last couple of years, uh, and I, I would say you should expect to see more. Uh, the businesses that are doing it are doing really good trade and we're also waiving fees, streamlining the process. Uh, the City of Sydney is now copying the work we're doing, which is good news. Excellent. Uh, and so we've seen Victoria Square or Hindmarsh Square uh, uh, be populated with people who are outrageously sitting around on the grass dining and mm. having, having their lunch. Mm. Uh, and so we'd really like to do that with uh, the riverfront as well. So we are experimenting, we're getting great feedback uh, and I expect you'll see more. We're also hoping to upgrade the, uh, the, the, uh, the cafe in Benighton Park next to Excellent. the playground. Yes. Yep. Um, I would love to get a liquor licence. Wouldn't it be great to be able to sit back and have a glass of wine mm. uh, while you watch your kids play on the playground? Mm. I, I don't think there's any better, do you? I think it's great. <laughs> so those sorts of things I think are, are really important. and. Uh, so we really are now focusing on not just building stuff, but providing the content which is going to bring people. So Barrio is a great example for the festival. You know, that hijack plaza, that uh, festival plaza, dead all year round. Mm. The moment you provide content is the moment people flock to these places. Absolutely. Uh, so council's really about starting to curate a city which gives people permission to do things in partnership with council uh, to make the city a, 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 a you know, a more vibrant place. And do you feel like um, with these thoughts in mind you've got uh, a majority of support behind you? Yeah, look, you get all kinds. I know that uh, we will have to learn because there is a challenge with residents, um, but then again most of the places we're trying to do are at the public places. 
Uh, frankly, the feedback I'm getting is consistently positive. Mm. Certainly the small businesses who say, I've never before been able to speak to a staff member who can make decisions in this sense that we've delegated all this power to the administration. Mm -hmm. I kind of find it funny that I get a bit of credit for this, yet the biggest thing I did is actually get my hands off mm. the implementation. Well, works. Uh, well, and, and it is important because mm. it needs to be responsive, it needs to be thoughtful, it needs to get on and be able to do things. If we don't get it right, we can move in with the trucks, move it all around, or even pack it up, put it on the back of a ute, and find another home for it. Yeah. Uh, and they're the sorts of dynamic responses that mean that this is um, on the ground consultation. Uh, it's experimenting by doing. Uh, it's engaging the community by doing. And uh, no one goes to a town hall to look at plans sure. of what may or may not happen. People want to see, feel, touch, smell, interact uh, with uh, change on their streets. Mm. And that's why I think that not only is this great for Adelaide and we are leading the country, uh, and I'm really proud of it. I think that's an Adelaide culture, um, but also I think we're doing something of global significance that uh, the world will be watching and we can export these ideas uh, to other cities to get the same sorts of positive outcomes. I think, I think we're, we're leading uh, the world in terms of reimagining and changing our city. Excellent. Well, stay with us because I've got uh, development plan uh, amendments to talk about, the Sturt Street uh, Affordable Housing Pro mm -hmm. Program and uh, speed limits to uh, ask you about shortly. Sure. Now we're going to go and have a look at our Going, Going, Gone segment. 